Hi everybody, welcome back to the Rick Shields Golf Show podcast. I am your host, uh, Ricky Shields. I've just right. got back from the open. You can tell by your voice, a little, little bit croaky, my, a little bit my, croak to my, it. <laughs> I've got a little bit of a croak. My eyes are red. Uh, I've had a very, 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 very long week at the open, but I'll tell you what, Guy. Come on, tell me what. Might have been the best week of my life. I bet. It was absolutely epic. Anyway, welcome back to episode 140. Um, we are going to do dive into the open. Uh, our experience at the Open, the Open winner, other fun stories, some shocking news in the world of golf. It's all here in episode 140. O- over to you, Guy. <laughs> I'm like, it's like a little tone. It's a bit of a husky like tone. <laughs> hey, everybody. I feel like I might just break. <laughs> no, what an amazing week. So, uh, obviously, the 150th Open at the home of golf, St. Andrews. It was very special. Did it live up to everything it should have done? Yes, it did. I think... For those people that went that had never been before, we, we were obviously hanging around with people and meeting people and they were all in awe of the place. And I think the only thing that kind of not annoyed me about the week, but I wish I could experience is I'm fortunate to have been there so many times now and I love the place. Imagine going to that for the first time this week. Yeah, That would have just been unbelievably special. But yeah, an amazing week. And obviously, um, what a fitting end. For me, Incredible. it was... Uh, so I had the best of both worlds, obviously, as you know. I went up on the Tuesday early, like you did. I had all day Tuesday, Wednesday, practice day. So you could get a feel for the event. You could get like close to the players. It was a lot more chilled. I was then the Thursday, Friday, which is obviously the tournament days. A couple of hours on Saturday, I was there. And then I came home. And I literally sat in front of the TV for most of the day Saturday and literally... All of Sun, well, all of Rory's round. So from when Rory teed off on Sunday till the end, I watched it all. Wow! And it was honestly the most excited I've been for a long time watching golf. Name me your top three moments this week from the actual golf, or from being there. From the actual golf, I think Rory's oh, oh, been there the whole oh, week. Wow. For, well, we'll come on to maybe we'll come on to being there in a minute. But from actually watching the golf, I think Rory's bunker shot. On ten, we yeah, hold it. Was Saturday, absolutely. That was Saturday. That was ridiculous. The, the crowd went bananas. Unbelievable. I think Cameron Smith's put on seventy. Well, the two puts, the put that kind of went round the road hole so bunker, good. and then the one that he boxed. Watch it again this morning. Unbelievable. How'd you do that? And that's the kind 71st of first sh- hole. Unreal. That's the kind of shot that in 10, 15 years time content creators like yourself, whatever, will be going there and recreating. Correct. In five years. Five years. Yeah, it's it. so such a because you watch, he could have easily put that in the bunker. Easily. He could have easily missed the, the put to hold for par. And that would have massively changed the dynamics. Yeah. That was incredible. And I think, to be fair, like Cameron Young on 18, that yeah. eagle he made off like a little Rick Shields eagle. Um, I think another massive, massive golf shot, to be fair, was Rory's put from like 60 yards away. Oh, he yeah. used a little bit of your inspiration. I, I was I was impressed with that. And apparently Tiger did the same thing years ago. Yeah. On the same hole. Almost the exact holes. same spot. That was insane. But I think it was just... A true, I mean, there's pros and cons to Andrews. I think as, from a viewer, from going to actually watch the golf, you don't get many good vantage points, of, obviously, other than the grandstands. Yeah. And the course, it did get a little bit destroyed by the scores. I mean, what was it, 19 under one? Or was it 20? 20, 20. 20 under. It's, it's deep, that. You know, it is, but I, I actually thought it might have been lower. Because mm-hmm. like, you see PJ PG, Tour events sometimes get to 20 under. That's true. Like, it's not ridiculous it's all it sounds daft it's only five under a round and yeah. for these guys that's not like stupidly stupid low. i think it held its own the pins were tucked really neatly behind kind of little bunkers and swales i actually walked around the golf course yesterday and and examined some of the sunday pins and they are really they were very very difficult to get to without even a question yeah it was and for cameron smith to go hit the bat nine and make six birdies unreal he birded 10 11 12 13 14 and then birded 18 and even the birdie on 18, that wasn't easy. He had to do it. And the pyre on 17 is really a birdie. It is. It, he was, just, it was insane. It was a flawless bat nine. It was a flawless 18 holes, but a flawless bat nine. To rightly so, he's won the players this year. He's been in contention so often to win the Open. I think it's uh, it's only fair. 100%. I, I was, like a lot of people, certainly in, in the UK and in Europe, I was massively cheering for Rory. I thought, what a better place to break that eight-year duck of no majors than the old course, the 150th. And you know what? He's obviously got a bit of a rep for blowing it. I don't think he blew it. I don't think he went deep enough, obviously. Two under par with a, essentially a four-shot lead. And obviously Victor kind of fell away. 
you probably would at the start of, day, of the day say that would probably be enough, and obviously it wasn't. Yeah. It was a shame to not see him do it. I do think, though, he's still only he's 33. He's still so young. He could literally be at the top level for potentially 15, 20 years more. He will win another major. But when? That's yeah. the question. He just didn't didn't hold anything, no. did he, all day? It, here's an interesting one. I, I, cause I, I was watching it live but because I was up on the lucky enough to get a really nice vantage point on, on Russell's hotel to see the, the final come in. Did he not hit driver on the last hole? Rory, yeah, I think. Because why didn't he get on the green? It Probably just took. It just took. Um, I think it bounced like an upslope. Uh, I'm sure okay. he did it driver though. All oh, right, I, I, I don't know why I'd heard a rumor afterwards that he hadn't hit driver, but either way, um, I was desperate for that pitch to go in that little pitch at the front, um, that would have potentially for well, it would have forced a playoff. But like I say, it was just magical. The scenes on 18 were unbelievable. The atmosphere on 18, the reception Rory got on 18 was was. Goosebump moment. He's really... I've had spells. I was a massive Rory fan a number of years ago. And then I, I wouldn't say I went off him, but I just kind of... Well, maybe I did. I kind of went off him a little bit, and I'm not kind of sure why. I can't really answer why that is. But recently, even though I've not really got massive opinion on whether I like live golf or not just yet, I think how we have stood up for the PJ Tour and actually had his voice heard and the way he's in interviews been so kind of articulate yeah, and thoughtful and talker. honest. He's really won me round again. And... Like I said, he'll, be I he'll be glad to know that. Well, of course he will. We're <laughs> mates. We played. I've never mentioned I played golf with him, have I? Oh no, you did. You <laughs> um, didn't remember that. And I think a lot of people probably in the same boat were really cheering him, on, cheering him on, and it will come. Um, but I think Cameron Smith is a serious golfer. Obviously, he's proved that this week. He fully deserves to win that Claret Jog. He'll go down in history. I'm not sure on the mullet and the bit of facial hair. It's different, isn't but it? But you can do what you want when you won the major. And also, John Daly didn't he have a mullet in 95 yeah, when he won. Exactly. So maybe it's just a trend. Maybe it is a trend. Um, I, I actually offended quite a lot of people yesterday. On Sunday, sorry. Because <laughs> a lot of people were asking me, who's going to win, who's going to win? And I must admit, I kind of was swaying towards Hovland. Were you? Yeah, before well, the round. Okay. Friend of the channel, he's been on. Yeah. He, I mean, Rory's been on years and years ago when I interviewed him at Nike Town. But Rory's been on... Uh, yeah, Vic Tovlin's been on, thinking young lad, talent, fresh blood. Like, I'd love to see him win. And when I spoke to people about it, so oh, who's going to really root, root for Rory? And I'd be like, mm, actually, I'm rooting for kind of Hovland a little bit. Oh, my God. People didn't I, like that. I was like, apologise. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean that. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, but there was one moment when I was going up to Russell's just as the, the close of play, and I, uh, I got into the lift on the way up. And uh, lo and behold, Rory's dad gets in the lift oh, at wow. the same time. It's about a bit of an awkward moment of thinking this was like Rory's on 17. And he was in the lift? Going up to watch it wow, from the roof. Wow, wow. And I was like, so? <laughs> I didn't say anything. Um, so, yeah, no, it was fun. Really fun week. Um, my highlights from being there was, I mean, we, we experienced it together. Tiger walking on 18 on Friday. That was insane. That reception was unbloody believable. He didn't have the week that everyone was hoping he did. He, he got off to a horrendous start. We spent time watching him on the range, up close and personal. He was striping it on the range. He could do no wrong every shot, but he just didn't look like the man we know out on the golf course. That was, yeah. So I, um, we, well, we were lucky enough to stand very near him on the range. Almost, well, actually, I got too near. So this is embarrassing. We oh, had yeah. uh, we had oh, passes. You, you went in a trance. We had passes to be on the range, which was great. And we were chatting to Bryson, which Thanks was really... to our friends at Top Golf and Top Trace. Best friends now. And we were chatting to Bryson, which was cool. Had a bit of a chat with Tommy, etc. And with most of the guys, well, all the guys, because obviously you have a range pass. You can literally go up to them because you might well know them or whatever it might be. With Tiger, that's a different story. There was like security a everywhere. Like a see-through, like, invisible, like, electric fence. And if you walk past it, the security guard shouts at you. And we were stood right near Tiger hitting balls. Like, we were so close from like here to the camera away or whatever. And I did get in a trance. You lost and, it. And my legs started walking. I had no control over I don't them. know how you were going to end up. I don't know. It was probably Hugging next him. to him. Just, just touched him <laughs> out on the shoulder. And this massive security guard. You what definitely he, wouldn't what, have got what, that. What did he say? Something like, Get the... No, he didn't. It was F almost more embarrassing. Back. Why'd you keep moving forward? <laughs> Dead loud. <laughs> yeah. Everyone looked. I was like, oh my God, it's embarrassing. So I, I moved back like a naughty little schoolboy. I think... Thankfully for me, though, more people also got a bit of a telling off at times. I think but, you got the biggest telling off, though. Yeah, I probably did. And Tiger probably noticed I, I'm it. the biggest fan. Um, but, yeah, like you said, the way he was hitting the golf ball, if someone said to you, this guy is world number one right now, you'd yeah. watch him and go, absolutely. 100%. But, if you put Scott Scheffler on yeah. the range next to Tiger 
and said, right now, watching these two golfers, who's the best golfer in the world? Well, Tiger. 100%. The way he was striking it, control over his shot. That, that He hit like this little 30-yard <laughs> chippy thing. <laughs> that was thing. weird. And it, it literally went 30 yards and spun back about five feet with, yeah. with like, with nothing on a on a driving range, it was unreal. But then the worrying thing was, then he went, walked back like the three yards to swap his club with his caddy. He was literally limping like mad. Yeah. He must loosen up throughout the round because when we see him on the golf course, although he obviously walks like he's in pain, it was nowhere near as bad as he was on the range. He was honestly yeah. hobbling. You couldn't believe he could go and play golf. Never mind in the biggest event in the world. Um, another Tiger story that obviously you know that I want to share the listeners. That's kind of. I'm proud of and I'm not proud of is obviously I wore my Tiger Woods t-shirt that had a mix of spawns, but I would say generally more positive. We'll put a picture on in a minute of, if you're watching, of me and my top. What did you think of it? I wouldn't wear it, yeah, but I liked it. Thank you. That's nice. You can't wear it now anyway. No, um, that's true. And yeah, I, a few people said, I like your top. My brother, who came to the Open as well, copied off me last minute when he knew I got that top. He said, I'm going to buy one as well. So I said, I'm copying, but fine. So he came to the Open wearing the same top as me on a different day. He's walking around uh, the open it's merchandise tent and oh, something's just gone wrong with the wires. I've just kicked this box. And he's walking around, minding his own business. Um, a lady taps him. It was Tiger's mum, Cultida Woods. And she said something along the lines of, um, thank you for supporting my son or words that you've got my ty- You've got my son's face. Yeah. Take one of these. Give him a little pin badge, the TW logo pin badge, a little wrapper. Gave it to him. He then got a picture with her. So basically, he now knows Tiger Woods. Wow. And I didn't get that when I wore my top. Can I tell you? I don't know if, I don't think it'll break and your brother's heart. I don't Go think on. it will. So uh, Mrs. Woods stayed at the Old Course Hotel, yep. one of our favourite hotels ever. And she gave pretty much every staff member that she Badge. that she kind of walked around with one of these badges. You know this? No, no, I didn't know this. And on the way out, so <laughs> the receptionist had one on receptionist had one a tag on her and a very 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 famous golf pro offered to buy it off her for a la- large sum of mon- m- money wow. and she said no oh my word well that's th- i've heard because i put it on twitter i've heard stories that she does this quite regular but it's the fact that it came from her um i am quite envious i, I yeah should i rob it off him uh i think so okay do it. <laughs> um no but it was an amazing open, and we've got obviously many more stories. I'm sure we'll remember in future weeks about things, little things that happened. You on the source, I had a couple of sources. I, I got source. randomly stopped by a load of lads that kind of lived near me that I didn't know. I ended up being out with them on the source for a few hours. It was really fun. One of them pinched me, got a huge bruise. Oh, wow. You look at that on the camera. I uh, became best mates with Sandy Lyle. Yes. And he, he didn't mind us slagging him off on the podcast. I don't think he knows what the slagging I, off on the podcast. No, no, he's told, I've told him. Um, Have you? And also, <laughs> he... Uh, I respect him now. He can play in the Masters for as long as he wants. Oh, well, that's good that he's played in the Masters. He won the Masters, won the Open, but now you respect him. Yeah, and Perfect. he gave me his phone number. We're going to get him on. I think we'll get him on March next year and <laughs> ask him about about the Masters. So that was good. Um, I got kicked out of VIP. And this, need, this might be in the title of the video, so let's come on to this. <laughs> so you, let's set the scene. Oh, I can't remember. A Saturday night. Of course it was. Saturday night. I am um, out having a nice time, as I was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. Okay, yep. Saint Andrews is a good place for this. Okay, mm-hmm. lots of good places. Shout out to Dunvegan, very much looked after me with my VIP pass. Amazing. Very much shout out to uh, Sounder Bar, the guys there, very much looked after me. Thank you, and also to a, an establishment called the Vic. The Vic. Now the Vic is the place where you end up at the night, and it's very, very good. I didn't realize Saint Andrews had this establishment which I absolutely fell in love with, okay? So, luckily enough, got quite friendly with the manager after spending every single day in there and probably spending a lot of money. I've not checked my bank accounts just yet. And I walk in and through the manager goes, oh, Rick, good like, you know, we've, got, we've got Brooks Kepka upstairs in, wow. in VIP. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, sweet. All right. But I'm not thinking, I don't know him. Never How met- sourced you at this point? No, you know Medium what? Source. No, this was this was second least source night okay so <laughs> i don't know how, how that puts it into perspective <laughs> but, but i wasn't rocking it okay. was just me and my pal neil most people you weren't gone. full shield at this point still no, rick correct right okay. still rick. I'm, still, 
<laughs> maybe There's a, a little, difference. Maybe a little bit of Ricky, but not not <laughs> not Rico. <laughs> not Rico. Oh my god! <laughs> Should we tell that story in a minute? As yeah. well? You had to ask, ask act to security. So um, so the manager says, I'll, "I'll see if I can get you in VIP." I'm like, "Okay, great. That sounds good." I'll go and introduce you to Brooks. I'm like, "I don't I don't know Brooks. I've never yeah. met him in my life ever." And he said, no, sorry, let's let's go and find out. So we went upstairs, went into his VIP, and it's VIP, but it's not VIP. Yeah. It's like a bit of a roped off area. Do you know what just I mean? Just like IP, important people, not very important people. Correct. It's just IPs, right? So we get to the rope and there's a security guard there. And in in this kind of VIP, it's quite busy, it's quite popping, right? And a, a guy in VIP, somebody I didn't know. I apologize if I did know you, but I didn't know you, puts his hand up to the manager and security guard. Yeah, them two. Me and my mate Neil. Yeah. They can come in. Of course. It's come Rick in. Rick Shields. Wave them in. So we'll I'm pay them to come in, if anything. I'm looking, I'm looking round. People, you know, people are spotting me and stuff. Whatever. <laughs> I'm hanging in VIP in the Vic. So the barrier comes up and off I go. And I'm walking. I'm thinking, oh, this guy, it's fine. Champagne's here, there and everywhere. And whatever. Okay, well, I'm going to have a good time. At this point, you're thinking, I've made it. I'm thinking at this point, this is where I go. This is where I could t- t- turn into Shields in pretty yeah, quickly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm Rick at the moment. Maybe Rico. I'm going to go to <laughs> Shield very soon. <laughs> so I'm in there and I lasted, guy, a grand total of 90 seconds. Talk to me. So <laughs> I come in and, we, and it's kind of like a U shape, this VIP bar. So I'm like, okay, this is fine. I'm going in. I'm wandering around the corner. End up chatting to Sam Westwood. So that's Lee's Lee son. Westwood's son. Okay. Yep. Chatting to him. Watches the channel. Wants to have a 10 shot match against me, reckons he can also beat me. Probably I'm could. like, okay, whatever, not a problem, right? That conversation was short and very brief and I kind of turned to my left and I see Brooks, <laughs> okay? See Brooksy, he's there, okay? So oh, that's quite cool. I, think I'm, I'm, I might introduce myself. Dream scenario is going to come up to me, give me a big hug. Rick, love you, love your videos, pal. Yeah. Like, that was a dream. Yeah, that's nice, the dream. Have some champagne, let's have some Sambuca, let's have a good night. That was the dream. Had he made the, he must have missed the cut. Missed the cut. Yeah. This is Saturday though as well, so it's like the day after the call. He's letting his hair down. Chill so I'm like, out. I'm like, okay, here we go. This could be embarrassing. God. This could be awkward in front of Neil and mate. That <sighs> Brooks Capcom knows me. God. Brooksy. Next to your hand shaking, fist bumping. So I turn to him and he looks at me right in the eye. Okay. He taps the security guard next to him, the bouncer. Okay. Yep. Turns back to me, points at me, points at my mate Neil. And indicates to the bouncer to remove us from the VIP. <laughs> 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 oh, it's awkward. So I'm like, what? What have, what have, I, what have I done to offend Brooks Kepka? What have I done? You've befriended Bryson DeChambeau. Maybe. So I'm like, so I'm thinking, oh God, this is really embarrassing now. Because 90 seconds ago, I've just walked in here like cock of the land, right? I'm now walking out with my tail between my legs. Like cock of the land. Like like tear. Like tears going down my eye. Can I ask you a question? Which would you rather be the case? He doesn't know who you are, and he thinks you're a random guy who's fluked his way in, so get rid of him. Or he does know who you are, but doesn't like you. The second one. You'd rather know you are, but not like you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I, want, I, want, yeah. I want him to hate me now. <laughs> this is now a feud. Call this him is out. now a feud. Yeah, I think mean, you could have him. Brooks Kepka. Why'd you keep me out of VIP? What happened, pal? Scared, isn't he? Right? What happened? I was doing no harm. I could have. I, I could have done harm. You could maybe, have maybe you could see it. Him. Maybe you could see it in my yeah. eye. I mean, the the truth. I mean, I won't go into the, ta- the the actual true story where I got him in the headlock and we end up grappling on the didn't floor. He, and, didn't he do a little bit of a cry and say, "Rick, stop"? And I kind of. I gave him. A, I gave him a, a Chinese bird. And then Chase kept came over and I knocked him out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He, he might have been threatened. I was looking pretty swag that night. I was looking pretty fly. He might have been threatened. You know what it is? He's jealous of Lyle and Scott. Could have been that. Anything. Could have been anything. But either way, I'm going to leave it to everybody's imagination because I told everybody in the world the next day and the story got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So can I confirm then, because this might be the title of the video and the podcast, you have beef with Brooks Kepka. <laughs> I do now. Yes, okay, perfect. He, he might, didn't do. He might not with me. Oh, he has. He but hates I've you. got beef with him. Yeah. Right now. Right, okay. So we'll see how it, maybe it needs to be resolved over a 10 there's shot three, match. Well, there's three ways to get settled. He okay. ignores you. Okay. Which is probably the case. You have a 10 shot challenge or a charity boxing match. Or an arm wrestle. Or an arm wrestle, which I think he's got a good chance at all for. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So anyway, that was, uh, 
And me and my mate Neil sat there. It sounds like I see at the in-betweeners, doesn't it, really? <laughs> we sat there at the end of a bar. I was like, what have I done, mate? He's like, and it, we were going through all these scenarios. What, what have I done? He's like, don't worry, he's a very nice guy. He consoled me very nicely. So the very next day, guy, to get my redemption. Um, you don't, I don't think you know this story. I don't. I bought the VIP section myself. Oh, my god! <laughs> I bought the whole place out, invited loads of different people. On the Sunday? And I was kicking people out. Oh, my <laughs> So I put this VIP section out, that same section. Oh Can you tell me how much that cost? No, on the air. Um, put the whole section out. We got bottles, we got vodka, Sambuca. Who did you invite that I know of? Um, Just like people. Loads of like the, the MasterCard people, loads of the... Um, oh my word. Like uh, loads of my, loads this of my mates. This is pure shields. RNA mates. And you know what? I did, so, I did kick some people out. Did you? And you know what? It felt bloody good. <laughs> It and now they're really going, good. Rick Shields knows who I am and doesn't like me. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. So, I uh, I might now have created more beef. It, this? But it got knocked on. Maybe someone, maybe on the Friday night, someone did it to Brooks. Tiger? Maybe Tiger had it on Friday. Michael Jordan had it Thursday. <laughs> Elon Musk got it Wednesday. So, <laughs> Jesus maybe, Christ had it Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Finch has got it today. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, speaking of um, Brooks Kepka, he is uh, well known now as being a live golf player. And fortunately, or un- well, how do we look at this? One of the very first questions asked to Cameron Smith after he won the Claret Jug was, are the rumours true that he's joining live golf? And his, you could argue, I've seen a lot of people saying how that's not a very nice question to be asked so soon, so quickly which I kind of understand, and people blaming the media and saying how the media are just looking for stories and headlines, which they are, let's be honest. But his answer was very... Do you see his answer? Mm. It was kind of, why ask me that now? Just won the Open, which is fair. I let my team decide on those kind of things. I just try and win golf tournaments. Now, if he wasn't joining Live, which we think he, he is, he's been offered $90 million, apparently. Surely your answer... I reckon would, that probably changed after well, he won the Open. Well, possibly. But you think surely his answer would just be... Why are you asking me that? I've just won the Open. Of course I'm not joining Liv. I'm a member of the DP World and PGA Tour, and that's where I want to play my golf. Done. Rumours gone. Yep. The fact he's answered that way leads us to believe he's joining. We also have got very, very heavy rumours as well. That Henrik Stenton, and by, I mean, this podcast is going out today, Tuesday. Even by the time this comes out, it might have been announced. I don't yep. know. Henrik Stenton is also rumoured to be leaving um, the PGA Tour, the DP World, well, the P- DP World Tour, joining Liv and giving up his captaincy of the Ryder Cup Being team next year. of his captaincy. Which is insane. And I think, you know, we're going to have these debates ongoing with Liv. Because and David Ferretti, apparently yeah, assigned, has joined for the obviously commentator. Announcer, which is massive as well. But you think, we all know really that Stenson is still competitive, but he's not at the peak of his game anymore, let's be honest. is Are they signing him, just to almost say, two fingers up to the DP world to look what we can do? That's one argument, rather than him actually going out and genuinely winning these events. If they sign Cameron Smith, that is absolutely ginormous because so far, let's be honest, a lot of the players have been kind of older guys who've got huge names but kind of passed it, or some younger guys. I mean, obviously, DJ and Kepka and, and Bryce were, were big, big signings. If they sign Cameron Smith, who is the current champion golf of the year, uh, I think he's actually world number two, but off last week's performance, the best golfer in the world, let's be honest. That is absolutely Crazy, massive. Do you think it's going to happen? And what do you think are the, you know, what's the what's the re- repercussions of this? Um, I, I, like I say, after his statement to the press, it did open the doors. Like, oh my god, what is he saying that for? Um, nothing surprises me anymore. No, nothing, nothing surprises me. And I think if he does sign, it's it is a. Re- ridiculously massive, massive story. Liv's got unbelievable press presence so far. I think this is going to blow it up into a different stratosphere. And the other thing as well, I think, Guy, if Cameron Smith goes, it wouldn't surprise me if a lot more jump straight after him because they'll slip him behind the radar. Yes. Do you get what I mean by yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's the biggest one to be... The only thing is that I'm shocked about... Where there's only 48 spots in this thing. Yeah. And they seem to be filling up very quickly now yeah. with very, very big names. So, like, I do find it, like, Henrik Stenson, if he's signed now, let's say, for example, I don't know where he is in the world ranking, if he could get pushed out in a fairly short period of time, 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, Unless well, there's a guarantee that he's going to have that spot. You'd think they'd say, here's your $50 million or whatever. You might get pushed out in three years, but you're still going to have the $50 million. Yeah. And at that point, he's thinking, well, I don't care if I'm not playing golf, then maybe, I don't know. But there's another rumour here that actually it's $130 million for Cameron Smith, not I was going to say 90 but, teams. But, but either way, let's just low. call it 100 for round figures. That's I think he's won... Don't quote me, but I think he's either won 13 or $19 million on course so far. So there's a difference I there. He's but, won nine this year. Right. So let's just call it 20 million. Just just again for round figures, these aren't going to be exactly correct. If Cameron Smith has won $20 million so far and he's getting offered 100, that's ridiculous. It's five times what he's ever won. But equally, he's a very, very rich young bloke as it stands. He's currently, again, the champion golfer of the year. He's going to have sponsorships coming out of his ears. Is that even the same? But anyway, he is. Does it look like it now? maybe, potentially, more than just money for these guys, because... You what, mean more like the, the deeper... Actual, yeah, they actually want to be... Part, yeah, I don't know, because I'm just thinking, I understand some of the guys have signed purely for money. Richard Bland goes out saying he's signed for money. He's almost come out and said that, really, hasn't he? I get that. But if Cameron Smith now has just won the Open, he's going to have all this money coming out, he's going to have more money than those to do with now, never mind signing for Liv. What's this extra money going to change his life back? How is it going to change his life? Is it, is it? Are they looking at it now genuinely? I don't know if this is the case. I'm just putting an argument forward. Are they looking at it and thinking, I do like the idea of the 54 holes. I like the idea of you know less tournaments. I know I can be in the majors for the next five years regardless. Yeah. I can be in the I'm open looking forward 60. to shotgun starts. Yeah. I'm looking is forward it to that? my caddy being looked after really yeah. nicely. Or is it still just purely money? I and don't also, know. And also, is it a bit, of a, a bit of a do one to the establishment? Potentially. Like, I, I, do they not like the PGA Tour more than people of that on or the DP World Tour, is there things going on that we don't know about yet that's kind of forcing these players and, went, you know, as soon as there is a, a slightly better option coming through which is going to pay you a lot more money, they're going, well, I don't want to be with these guys anymore. They've not looked after me or they've not done anything. I'd like to think that's not the case. The one thing, though, and again, I, I look, around that 18th hole at St. Andrews on Sunday when... Cameron Smith has just won the Claret Jug and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of thousands of people around. How many of them do you think knew or know how much he actually made for that very win? Very few. Very, very few. And and regardless of him, how much did Cameron Young make for second yeah. or Roy make for third or Tommy make for fourth? Nobody nobody knows these numbers. You don't need to know. And that I, I want to get back to that. I don't mind these guys yeah. making a ridiculous amount of money. I don't mind it. They they filled 290,000 fans came this week, right? Yeah. They came to watch those pl players play golf. That's it, end of, and the history. and the, and So they should make a lot of money. I've got no reason for But I don't want it to be um, showcased. Yeah. Like, pay, pay, pay the champion golf of the year 10 million if you want. But just don't make it a big thing. It's, it's about deal. the claret jug, isn't it? It's about the claret jug. The only thing that opened my eyes this week, this weekend as well, I'm going to say this now. I still, I'll be honest, and hopefully people can see I'm being honest. You're going to get comments, people saying one thing or another. But I truthfully still don't have a fully formed opinion on Liv yet, whether I like it or not. I honestly don't. But I think you're fairly yeah, similar. It's only been two events. That's the, I see some things that I like and see some things that I hate. You know, where the money's coming from, the fact it's all about money, I hate. The fact that it's kind of fast-paced and stuff I quite like. But what I did think this, this week was nothing, no event, in my opinion, will ever top the Open, you know, the Masters, the, the US Open, the PJ, the major championships, yeah. they are the four events a year that mean more than anything. And I actually think, sounds ridiculous, but Cameron Smith will be happy if there's no prize money. It's about that claret jug yeah. and that gold medal and that champion golfer of the year, winning an event that Tiger has won, old Tom Morris has won, Jack Nicklaus, Seve, you know, go on and on and on. That's what it's about. Yeah. They will never go. As long as we have those four a year and they're four real meaningful events packed full of history. With the best golfers. The best golfers in the world. From the wherever, world. whatever tour they want to be on. The best, best elite golfers. We have those four. The rest of the remaining weeks of the year, as long as they're filled with excitement, I don't really mind if it's something new. So I, I suppose what I'm getting at is I'm not getting four live, but as long as nothing affects those four majors and we have that real heritage events... I kind of am a bit more open to something new than I pos possibly thought I was. Does that make sense? I think, yeah. I think the one that uh, you've and you, you've expressed it a little bit, I'm probably more passionate about. I think the one event that's definitely going to be um, affected here is the Ryder Cup. Yeah, that is a hundred percent going to be affected. We're seeing that already. 
I don't know if, how open they've come out with information yet, but that's pretty much ran by the tours, by yeah. BJ Tour and DP World Tour. They're not going to let live players play in this thing. They're not. That's the event that I'm wor slightly worried about. And I, I don't... There's arguments about, well, have a PJ Tour Ryder Cup against Liv. I'm not, that I'm not asked anyway. about that. But I'm no. also not asked about that. I'm not passionate about that. And and I know you mentioned about getting behind Europe, but I do, for me, I am more passionate about European winners, mm. personally. I just am. Just in, when I look through the leaderboard, I'm like, I feel like he's one of my, he's one of our guys. Do you get what I mean? It's just, yeah. even, even like... But just to throw a spanner in the works, who would you rather win, Adam Scott or Rory? But that's weird. I still see Adam Scott being one of our guys, even though he's Australian. <laughs> yeah. Probably against Americans, maybe. But I don't obviously Tiger Woods, but I don't know. I just find it I, I'm I'm intrigued to see what happens there with the Ryder Cup. Yeah, me too. I'm intrigued to see what the masters are gonna come out and say. Yeah. They've not said anything yet. They've kept very tight lipped about all of this. Are they gonna ban them? Are they gonna not? I think they're all waiting to see what happens at things like the open. Like there was rumours that Ian Poulter got booed on the first hole. Yeah, I did hear a bit of that. <clears throat> You know, it, how much is that going to continue? How much is that going to, is it going to fizzle down or is it going to ramp up? Like, is it, is it, is it a few boos at the moment because people don't like it? Or next open, are these guys going to be celebrated like they would do anyway? But, but also, you know, with, with guys turn up at the open with like majestic yeah. t shirts on and things like that. I heard those boos on the TV or on online. I think I searched it on Twitter actually and found the clip of it and there definitely was some boos. I think they were more like pantomime boos because he also was walking down one of the holes in the practice day or maybe the Thursday, I can't remember which. It must have been practice day, actually. And he was walking down the fairway and, yeah, he was. He was playing with Sam Horsfield. He was, yeah. Day. And that we were going across the second, wasn't it? Or second I think third. this was when I was a Tuesday bit later oh, on. Yeah. Anyway, he, someone was asking for his autographs. Loads were asking for autographs. And honestly, the amount of people that were flocking towards Poulter was unbelievable. Kids, older people. They weren't booing him. No. And that's what you won't see on the media. You won't see that. And people won't publicise that because it's not as exciting. But... Yeah, I don't know. It's it's a very it's a strange place right now. I think, as I said, as long as the four majors are okay, the Ryder Cup's going to take a hit. I think, unless something it changes, um, but it's very very interesting. There's going to be more players announced. I believe that by the end of this year, there's going to be a proper full roster of players. Who knows? Um, got quick one, one before we come on to we've got loads of more news, but I've, I'm uh, we've got a really really busy week, which we'll come on to in a minute. Uh, quick story about you playing security card. Oh yeah, well, I needed you on Saturday night, my buddy Brooksy. So you, you, I, I was surprised, but not surprised at how many people came up to you for pictures and for autographs and to say hello. It, it was, was a, it was bonkers. It was insane. It and was, all the podcast listeners, came yeah, up the podcast, well. yeah, that was great. Um, quite a lot of people saying, "Oh, come on, guy, get in," because you get left out because of one comment made a while ago. But everybody was lovely, and you gave them a lot of time to fair play. You were very good to people. Um, I think it's. It, I must admit, it took it's taken it out of me a bit. Yeah, this week I'm, uh, and it's hard because it's like it's what I do, it's my job. But it's um, I, I hopefully everybody I bumped into, spoke to, um, had uh, you know got a nice picture and a nice quick chat. It was just very taxing towards the end. But yeah, please but don't yeah. ever stop doing it, anybody. It's no, good. it was great. Um, but one guy, there was one, needs to stop yeah, there was it. one guy. He was he was obviously a fan. He was very intoxicated. Yes, and he was following you. Go, he went. Oh, Rick, Rico. Is that Rico. just straight off Rico? You go Rico straight away? Straight away. <laughs> Rico. Rico. I went, hi, mate. And he just looked at me again. Rico. I'm like, hi, mate. You all right? Where are you going? Where are you going, Rico? Yeah. The only thing is, I wonder if he actually has a mate called Rico who look, just looks like me. No. I think he actually <laughs> was calling you. And then you didn't like it, was it a while. Well, it was just... It, it went on bit, for what felt like an eternity. It was a bit eternity. too much. And we were going through like the fan zone and there was lo quite a lot of people. And I kind of just said, oh, right, pack it in now, pal. And I I missed this. My I had tunnel vision, but guy stepped in and and uh, and finished him off. No, it was just I just very calmly said, "Oh, can you just leave it out, mate?" And I didn't push him, but just kind of like it was very relaxed. Put an extended arm out to him. Yeah, and I think he he, he looked a bit embarrassed, and I think he didn't quite realise how annoying he was being. He just had a few drinks. His but, shoulder barged into your hand. Yes, and then he looked at me and I said, "I'll get what's kept on you." <laughs> oh sugar. Um, just something some, some quick. I want to yeah, run yeah. through with. I don't think I've told you this yet. Nothing massive, but. So, obviously, whenever a golfer wins an event, we get emailed off the brand. They send out an email, basically, to every media outlet about the winner and what was in the bag and why the driver they were using is the best thing to slice bread. And most of the time, I don't even open them because I don't care. Like, if, do you know what I mean? It's just rubbish. But what interests me, so we've got an email title list about um, Cameron Smith winning the Open, as you'd expect. What was really interesting, though, was at the bottom, there was... Um, 
a little bit of info about how successful the Titleist brand has been this week at the Open. So, number one golf ball in the field was Titleist. Okay. 70%. That's a lot. Now, obvious stats. If you got 10 golfers at random from the Open, seven of them would be using a Titleist ball. I thought that was incredible. Um, The driver was 31%. Again, number one. Hybrid, 38%. Utility iron, 35%. Iron, 28%. And wedges, 46%. So obviously That's putters, they mustn't have been number one. I also would have publicised that. But half the field using a Vokey. I wonder what the putters are now. Taylor made yeah. or ping? I think Odyssey. Oh, yeah, Odyssey. Um, <laughs> and then number one ball. But then also, every major this year has been won by a Pro V1 or a Pro V1X. So you've got, obviously, Scott Cameron Scheffler. Smith, Scotty Scheffler, Matt Fitzpatrick, yeah. and Justin Thomas. Wow. All use either Pro V or Pro V1X, which is incredible. But I just saw that stat and I just thought, that is mad that 70% of the field use a Titleist golf ball. There'll definitely be some posters going around with those four faces on. It has to be done. Well, I, don't know if, I don't know if it's Patrick. It's Scottie, is Scotty not Taylor made? No. He is, but use a Titleist ball. Like, cause I checked on, and also, every major winner this year is under 30. <coughs> so Brilliant. golf's in a good, good place. Good for the sport. Yeah, very good place. We're well, talking about young kids. <laughs> talking about. Me potentially feeling Ricky quite, old, after a night out. quite old this week. We've got some very, very exciting news. Today, we hinted about a few weeks ago, today, flying in which camera... Can I look down this lens of this camera, Matt? There we go. Hi. Today, all the way from Texas, America, flying in. I don't think private jet yet, but it's getting Not close. far off. Are the good, good boys. Now, wow. These lads are killing it on YouTube. Garrett, Micah, Bubby, Stephen, Grant, and Matt are absolutely killing it. So, only rightly, I thought we'd invite them over here to the UK for a week of collaborative content, which I genuinely believe might just break the golfing internet. Well, there's two options. We either make some boss videos with them or try and delete the channel while they're here. Which I like both options. Yeah, I like both I'll options. Use them for clout and then delete them. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm, <laughs> I'm really excited about meeting the guys. I've met... Uh, Mike was actually weirdly up in Scotland yeah, at St. Andrew, so I spent a bit of time with him this weekend anyway, so he's already here. Um, really good videos. Sorry, I can't remember. Like, <laughs> <laughs> really good, really good lads making really, really good videos. Yes. If you've not seen them yet, do check them out. Probably got a younger audience, uh, but they are doing great stuff for golf. They're driving it forward. They're pushing the content. It's making us push our content further forward. Um, there's a lot of YouTube channels I don't like, which I've probably advertised <laughs> before. I've not got time to name everyone. But that channel, good, good. I absolutely love. So I think it's going to be an epic, epic week. Yeah, that's it. They're doing um, very... Kind of similar to us, but they're also very different. They play a lot of matches, a lot of on-course vlogs, very, very good production values, very young, very cool. I think they're about literally mid-20s is the oldest one. I think Garrett's like 22, so they're very, very young. Appeal to a different, younger audience. Oh, no, no, I think... This one, no, I think Mike is a bit older. He might be, but I think Garrett's is yet 22. I think, I don't you said the youngest then, did you? Yeah. Or the oldest? Oh, sorry. No, I think I the oldest is mid-20s. Right. I think Mike is about 20. I don't know exactly, but they're not, like, old. Um, but, yeah, they're doing good things. It's good to collaborate and um, make some stuff. Rick's, You're playing them all match play. Rick's taxi is turning up tonight to pick them up in the Venga bus. The banter, banter machine. Thing is, if I go up and say, right, boys, the Venga bus is here, they'll yeah. look at me like, what, yeah. the, what are you talking about? Do you know Dad's here to pick us up. <laughs> that weird uncle's coming. Go to bed, mate. So hopefully we can bash ideas together. We can create cool content. We're going to do a meetup, um, which we have arranged, but we've not advertised yet. Also, um, we need we'll to... not say it just yet. We, yeah, we'll announce it on social media. We need to apologise as well. Oh, what have I done? Well, what have we done? We kind of semi-promised. Well, didn't promise, but said we might last week have been doing some kind of podcast on the fly. Ah. And um, Ricky Shields, Shields, he stopped that. Rick ruined it. Every day I was passionate. Rick would just do a podcast half now. Please, mate, please. I'll even pay you to do it. He wouldn't have any of it. He was just too busy fighting Brooks Koepka. Um, so we didn't do any in the end. But I think if we did, it would have been these stories anyway that we've just told. So, it, it, yeah, the matter, does it? I don't think it matters. Like I say, it's, um, sorry, we should have done it. We took the equipment and it, it never... Did it even get out of the car? No, it got out of the car in my uh, dorm and it. It didn't do anything other than sit there. Big heavy bag. But anyway, it's not our fault. Listen, it's not our. F- it's my fault. How do you feel your performance was through the week then? Like in terms of the nights out? Very do strong. You feel, feel, yeah. Very no, strong. No regrets. Just... I had a couple of really, really stupid nights. Yeah, I've heard about one of them. Friday night. Uh, was it Friday? You were very sourced on... Thursday night. 
Wednesday night. <laughs> Every, when my brother was there, and then... What night was that? No, listen. It's Friday. I let my hair down. You let your hair down, yeah. I'm in St. Andrews. Yeah. We met up with uh, Greg the day after that big night out, actually. Yeah, Adam, Greg, Scott. uh, Adam Scott's caddy. And he said, how, how are you doing, Ricky, and all this? I was like, you know what? I'm struggling. Today I'm struggling a little bit. But he said, this is... Put his hand on my shoulder. I went, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You enjoy it. Mm. And as soon as he granted that permission, Guy, I pushed on. I pushed on hard. Um, however, I had a great week working as well. I got to interview Michael Mira. Legend. That was really cool. My best mate, Tom Watson. Legend. Let me tell the Tom Watson story. Tell it in a sec. Tell the rest of the people that you interviewed and tell Tom it. Watson, DJ Spoonie, Sam Burns, who played in the event, and Catherine Newton, who's a massive actress, Eric Anders Lang, and Brian Habana. Nice. Rugby player. So they're really cool on the MasterCard club. So the story was, uh, there's this lovely MasterCard. Anyone that went will have probably seen it. MasterCard. I don't want to say tent. Cause it's not, it's how a do you, club. club. Yeah, it's MasterCard like a huge club. like part of the tented village. Like a fixed marquee. Massive. And if you have a MasterCard, you can go in. Lovely drinks, lovely bits of food. You can watch the golf and the telly. And upstairs, another kind of room where Rick was hosting his interviews every day. I said to you at the time, did a very good job. Thanks. Um, you did. And at the back was where there was like little MasterCard office and stuff like that and that's where you were meeting your guests. So and like, can I set the scene then? So, so it was, I can't remember which day it was. Was it maybe Wednesday I interviewed? Uh, maybe Thursday, I think it was. I interviewed Tom Watson. In fact, it was that night, the night after interviewing him, that's when I got a bit merry. And I think it started here. Yeah, okay. I think I got a bit excited yeah. here. So, met Tom. Me and, me and TW go back a bit, right? Not Tiger Woods. It, both. But me and Tom Watson <laughs> go back a bit. We obviously played about the old, two weeks it is the now. old the old course in reverse and all do you know what I mean? When you've when you've done these sort of iconic things, you've you become quite connected. Yeah, you do. I've not even talked about going to Sir Nick Faldo's birthday party. Oh, it was just too much flex. <laughs> we should have done maybe save that one. We should have done podcast every day. <laughs> we have, yeah, we should have. So um there's no there's certain memories that I like to keep as well. So um going in the back and round the kind of back near the near the bins and all, all the other <laughs> stuff really. Isn't Where it? the classy people hang out. Um there was an introduction first with Tom before we went upstairs onto stage and Tom Watson came through and it's like, hi Rick, hi Tom, good to see you. I hope the video's done well. Yeah, it's done great. And his new wife is there who's been only got married last week. Yeah. In, in St. Andrews, I believe. Cool. And she's lovely. Really, really nice. In fact, she's now become my best, best friend. So she goes, oh my God, it's Ricky Shields. Like, oh, not Ricky Shields. Rick Shields. <laughs> <laughs> And she, she, she maybe goes, don't do the accent because that she might goes offend her. Like, like love, you, love your videos. I like, can't believe this. She said, and she's turned to Tom and gave Tom her mobile phone and said, Tom, get a picture of me and Rick. Right, it's on there with Mrs. Watson and taking a nice picture. And she's like, oh my god, this is the biggest moment. I've I've interviewed, I've I've met Hollywood stars, film actors big stars in the music music world but this moment right here is the biggest you are like i'm thinking oh my god this, tom watson's there and he's watching this so he's, and she also said my fans are, uh, my son's a huge fan um you know watches everything he's gonna be so jealous i said well do you want me to do him a video and she went would you and i said yeah i don't mind doing a video so tom was there with his phone and he went to go and press record and lucky you were here to witness this because it's one of those stories so far that, it's all going true uh, so far it's one of those stories i don't think people would believe all the mastercard people were there which was quite nice for me because i was working for mastercard that week so tom's starting to take this video and she goes no no tom give me the phone uh rick's a professional he'll do it so next minute i go into rick shields mode hit hit the record button uh, should have remembered her son's name, but hi, it's son's name. Um, I'm here with your mum. You know, blah, 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 at the open. And once I finished the video, she went, "Oh my god, this can be the most iconic moment." And thank you, and she was hugging me. So basically, I'm um, Tom Watson's wife's bestie. Cool. Um, remind me of it again. When we're addresses. Yeah. Oh, you beat me to so it. You can send me my medal. Yeah, you beat me to it. Well done. Thanks. Listen, no, it was I, it was very I had, cool. I had a good week, and I, unfortunately, sometimes I'd like to be quite, you know, subdued, and I'd like to be kind of quite humble. But at certain points, I go, you know what, I'm flexing. Yeah. I'm flexing all day on some of these things. I try my best to kind of neutralise the flex though sometimes as well, just to. It would have gone silly if I you let me go full flex. So yeah, I appreciate that. You back down a little bit. But uh, no, listen, uh, getting kicked out of VIP brought me about that that, that was i'm really happy to have because that's going to be the title of this podcast so well done for that brooks thanks. kepka thanks thanks for you fool content. guys thanks for Shall watching we start <laughs> what's that i won't say it no we're not going to start anything with him beef
Oh, unless he gets some more views. No, I'm joking. I don't mind him. <laughs> no. I can tolerate him. I Small don't. doses. I can't. Well, I had 90 seconds with him. That's all he could tolerate with me. Imagine if it had gone the opposite way, though. If said, hi, Rick. They just would have been like, Brooks kept with my best mate. mate. Selfies, sticking him on Instagram. Yeah. Ten shot next, ten shot challenge yeah. coming up soon. But no. We'll fool him. He ruined it. He did. He'll regret that for the rest of his days. The rest of his oh. life. And he missed the cut. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Look at you now, my tracking. Um, final, 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 final thing. Last week's um, guest, Adam Scott. The main video is coming out Friday. Yes. Which is a 10 shot challenge around King Barnes. I was rooting for him so much. He did well, This though. week. Because he got, was he top 10 or yeah, just outside top s- 10? Uh, I feel like he was seven. Tommy or? Fleetwood did really well. Victor Hovland did nicely. Obviously, a bit of a shame on, on his final round. Minwoo Lee did good. I oh, know he was tied 15. And, no, that's not right. Yeah. All the podcasts got, yeah, he actually did drop a few yeah, coming home. Fair dues. He was knocking at the door for quite a while. Um, let's have a look who else did well. I've There's quite a lot of people with. off the podcast did quite good, which is, is nice. He's got Cam Smith on now. Yeah. Well, see what happens. Yeah, we've had Tommy Fleetwood was obviously fourth. Victor Hovland was fourth. Bryson DeChambeau, eighth. Tyrrell Hatton, 11th. Yeah, list goes on. But that was good. All very good. Anything else? Any final words? Uh, I need to go home and spend time with my wife because tomorrow I'm leaving again. And uh, You could have left uh, the old class earlier yesterday and got home nice for <laughs> lunch. <laughs> you were working yesterday, were you? Don't <laughs> as if she listens to the podcast and as if she listens this far into the podcast. There's someone who knows I might do. No, I was working. Why don't we put the end of each podcast could be Rick's secrets, and we do it for as long as we can before your wife finds out. <laughs> oh, wow. Tell one secret in episode. So that's the first one that you weren't working on Monday. No, I don't fancy playing that game. I really enjoy that game. <laughs> I don't, that's not a game. I want to play, thank you. That's not a game. I don't even want to say I booked out VIP. But it's a good way of getting Sunday. people to listen to the end of the podcast. So next week's Rick's secret is going to be an absolute monster. Okay. Well, then this this week's secret can be that I booked VIP on Sunday night, and I was. So hung over Monday you that I couldn't drive early enough, so I had yeah. to wait for the alcohol to wear off. Nah, yeah. So you could have been at home early yesterday, you had a full family day, but you didn't. This is getting a bit far now, isn't it? Wow. We'll see you next week for Rick's Secrets. Thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>